Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to Capsize, all Texas music. Uh, we've been doing this for 30 years, bringing you nothing but Texas music. We hope you dig it, because we love making it. Capsize, all Texas music. Hey, what's up, you guys? You're watching Capsize, believe it or not, Capsize. And uh, I'm super proud to have my dear old friend Johnny Gowdy on Capsize. Yeah, again. dude. What the hell? Great to be back on Capsize. Isn't that crazy? So many things have happened in here. So many things. And now, uh, when, I first, uh, when I first moved to Austin, uh, returned to Austin in 1991, that was one of my rituals was watching you and Nathan. That was crazy. I remember little Johnny Gowdy. Calling hey, in. man. Yeah, you found that and posted it. <laughs> yeah, said if I could promote my New Year's Eve show. Yeah. At Mercado Caribe. What the hell? <laughs> that was so... Yeah, like, man, that was mm. great. Uh, that's uh, Yeah, but I've, I've, I've played in this room in so many different incarnations mm -hmm. and hung out in this place so much. The, uh, the Rocket Baby set was one of the, the classic capsized pieces, yeah. man. I, didn't we come from a gig? I bet because we were what at midnight. You guys back were at midnight. I think so. we played somewhere and like came straight here from the gig. Yeah, like yeah. on fire. And uh, it, it was definitely on fire. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah there was probably yeah. lots of things on fire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you did a reunion with Rocket Baby, which as a fan was really cool to oh, see. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You were there. Yeah, that was man. fun. That was one to one. Yeah, it was that one to one? It seems like there was another show. Was there no, two? there was just, just one. that one. Yeah. But it was fun. Hell yeah. Yeah. It was good to see the gang all together. Yeah. And hear those songs. It was just a time machine. Yeah. Thing, you know? You know, uh, <laughs> I spent like two months relearning those songs mm. when I did. Yeah. Wow. I practiced singing them. Because well, there was a lot of different, like, there was a lot of, uh, just Richard and I both sang, mm -hmm. there was a lot of harmony switching mm -hmm. and stuff like that yep that was it took a little while to get used to again you know it is what it is good days good times good memories i uh, i'm glad to see those songs online now and yeah. uh, i jam those pretty regular man Do you? yeah they're on soundcloud uh, yes right? exactly yeah. yeah it's great man <laughs> yeah yeah i miss that time i wrote it anybody here that lives in austin that ever worked at the congress house i wrote this in the little living room area where there was a piano after a while but when i lived there there was a tv and I wrote a lot of uh, uh, Mr. Rocket Baby songs in that room while I was watching TV. And mm -hmm. this is one I, I, uh, I wrote and recorded on my four track just before the band got together. <laughs> Take the seeds of forgiveness, drop them in the water, and watch them grow.
Now, you also did uh, Sunshine in here with Shandon yes, and I did, Bart. Yes, and Sunshine with Shandon and Bart. Uh, there's Mr. Rock. But there were, there were early incarnations. There was a show that used to be on Wednesdays, mm-hmm. like in 91 and 92. Yep. And my friend Matt Bickley used to host it. Oh, right on. And we worked together at Whole Foods. And so he would have me on from time to time. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, you know, back when you could have lots of airtime on here, yeah, yeah. you know, I would have two or three shows a week myself. Right, because you had the Tuesday night raw time, right? Yep, yep. And then Saturday night capsize. And then every once in a while, when we had extra time, we'd do like sail hate and karaoke. Or, yeah, yeah. You know, we do some silly call in thing yeah. or whatever. And uh, had James on the crew uh, back then, who was the old biddy, and he was doing his thing. And uh, Nathan is in here now, so it's really crazy old school family yeah. doing. <laughs> Capsizing Everyone's kid, same, you know? just so, a little older. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, as we said, you've, you've worked with lots of people from the moment I've known you, and you've continued to work with tons of people. Yeah. Um, you're doing How Did I Get Here, the podcast. Right. You're over 1,300 episodes yeah. in. Uh, do you find collaborations these days any different than they were back then? Yeah. Yeah, they're a lot different. Because as you get older, then people have lives and they don't have as much time to just sit around. Cause like, you know, when I started working, like when I first met like AJ Vallejo and we became friends, he used to come over like every day for like three or four hours a day. That's awesome. I was, we had nothing to do. Yeah. So we had like, a, you know, gigs on the weekends and stuff, but we didn't have like, you know, he didn't have a family. Just, it, it, it seems like, I guess, maybe when you're younger, times are a little simpler. Yeah, right. You know? It's but, easier to go out and drink four or five nights a week and run into those people. Exactly right. That's, That's another thing too. Is <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like yeah. if I if I go out now, I will book at least two or three podcasts. Nice. You know what I mean? Yeah, Just from yeah. going out. That's awesome. Yeah. That's kind of where I was going. It's like, how do you get the talent? Does someone approach you to get on? Yes. Now a lot of people. Now I'm. Uh, yes. I, uh, publicists. I do a lot of work with publicists. I. I find that I, I have to like squeeze in time to be like, no, I want this band that yeah, I found to exactly. come on the show, you know. I'm dealing with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just kind of walked away from it forever. And like, it's a blessing to come back and people are like, so, hey. Yeah. I'm like, me? You yeah, really yeah, yeah. want to, you know? So, yeah, that's, that's neat. Well, it's an institution. Like that show, like, I mean, it was like a, it was like a thing. Like, do you remember how... Uh, like in the 80s when, when Headbangers Ball started, mm-hmm. like you and your friends would get together or like you'd go out, come home, have to have some beers, have a smoke or something and watch Headbangers Ball. Definitely. G- Capsize was like that. That's cool, man. Yeah, it was like a thing, like come home from the clubs, you're drunk, <laughs> there's the guys on TV. There's this song called Let Me Be Your Man that I wrote with my friend Jeremy Nail. I didn't sleep at all last night And I know I'm running out of time And I'm getting into trouble over you I stumbled through this sleepy town The fog was thick when I laid down It's hard enough to get the message through Where do I begin Before I give my heart again I've taken all the damage that I can Baby, won't you please let me be your man Well, I followed you through thick and thin You pushed me out, you let me Kept me hanging on by a thread You can play the victim or the thief And either way it's fine with me But I don't want to leave before I've said Where do I begin Before I give my heart again See I've taken all the damage that I can Baby won't you please let me be your man Where do I be 
begin Before I give my heart again See I've taken all the damage that I can Baby won't you please let me be your man Yeah let me be your man Oh won't you let me be your man I still love seeing live music and I still just dis- dis- discovering new talents uh, Yeah during your set you did a number that uh, you'd worked on with Jamie Harris who's uh-huh. one of the most amazing folks I've stumbled across in yeah, town she's forever amazing. and uh, how did was that a how did I get here thing or how did you hook up with writing with Jamie Maybe so I think we might have become friends. I think she started listening to the show and started, like, saying stuff about it on social media. And then I went to go see her play, and I, I was... I mean, there there aren't many artists that are that good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. she's really, like, so far... Like, I remember the first time I saw her telling her, like, if I had a record label, I would sign you right now. Yeah. Totally. Like, even if you didn't even have a lot of songs or anything. The song is called Everyone's Got Something, and I wrote this with the... Jamie Harris, who's very talented. She comes by every single day To tell me how much noise I make I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking I'm keeping her up She's got to get some sleep Every day's like hell set on repeat I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry It's the same old line But I've given it out And now I'm taking mine shows do you do for the podcast uh, do you have a regular yeah tape? I put out a regular regularly I put out two shows a week um, wow I feel like if I if I slowed it down or if I if I took a break I wouldn't I'd quit yeah <laughs> this once a week is good for me yeah yeah well, I mean you know what you did two shows a week for a while then I did. too years and years but um but I'm able to do like since mine isn't live I'm able to you know take time off from doing the interviews and stuff like that totally Absolutely. Yeah. Um, as far as something you just said, like with uh, 
you had a record label you would sign so getting signed anymore like there's no music in the music no mm. no business in the music business right anymore, right right like right. so what's your take on that how does an artist um make a living in the music business anymore you know I mean, sadly, a lot of times it's like get a job because it's almost like a pretty expensive hobby. Totally. You know? Yep. And unless you can find other... It's difficult in the model that, that I came up with and that you're used to seeing like a Mr. Rocket Baby. Like the yep. four of us were... That was the only band we were in. Yep. We weren't in any other bands. We tried to work... I mean, we played at least three days a week, if not more out on the road and stuff we worked at least thursday friday and saturday nights and um that sort of like we're going to be abandoned like the whatever u2 model that you're mm -hmm. just going to keep on going and be those four guys forever that's not really a thing that people <laughs> do anymore it's mm -hmm. odd yeah so this song is called they made men criminals <laughs> Because of streaming, like there's, there used to be these avenues, and those avenues, like there were gatekeepers. You needed, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you had to get through some people, and then you would get a huge amount of money. Yeah. Once you got in the in the right lane, mm -hmm. you would get huge amount, like millions and millions of dollars. That kind of thing just doesn't happen that much more in entertainment, because uh, it's because television shows. Everybody watched Seinfeld. When you saw people on Friday, everyone had seen it the night before. Mm -hmm. Now they have so many choices that I, you know, out of Chicago Fire, like I don't know anyone who watched Chicago mm -hmm. Fire last night or something. Right. You know what I totally, mean? Totally, I do. So there's just not as much, uh, there's not as much of a huge payoff at the end, which, which, I mean, in some ways, there's no gatekeepers. Like we could write a song right now, record it and have it on Spotify in the next day. Yep. Or on SoundCloud in an hour. There was a time, in the time that we grew up, music and uh, 
the people that made the music drove the culture. Yeah. Like people dressed, people had Beatle haircuts. So when I was a kid in high school and Madonna came out, all these girls dressed like Madonna. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Dudes dressed at certain, like their favorite band guys. But now you don't see anyone dressing like Billie Eilish. Right. Like it doesn't drive the culture anymore, which is a real weird thing to say, but it's, it's true. Like the music that, like the odd thing is, is that people that are taking in the culture are the ones driving the culture because they're also the stars. Like if you would have gotten, if you would have been like uh, 15 years old and gotten to go see Kiss and you had a camera, you would have never thought to point that camera at yourself with Kiss in the background. Right. You would have just pointed it at Kiss and you would have been like, oh my God, I saw Kiss. I have this picture of it. Right. But now it's about you. <laughs> I'm at the Kiss concert. Like, you know what I'm saying? It is. It's no longer about the thing. It's more about ourselves and how we're participating in things. It's real odd. It's a great observation. Yeah. This song is called A Letter to Sally Who Might Still Be Mad at Me. back to your good buddy Lars Ulrich yeah. <laughs> and uh, Napster. Yeah. Um, I knew, oh man, for many reasons, I'm not a fan of the man. But looking back, I have to say he was right. He was right. And it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I think a lot of the sad thing, too, is during that time, that's when we were on his label, and that's yep. like when our record came out, like in the height of all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think was misunderstood, that he wasn't doing it for them. Like they weren't doing it because they weren't making enough money. Because remember that was like, mm -hmm. don't you have enough money? You can't just give away a couple records. And he's like, no, I don't care. They're, look at, they're still selling out. Yep. 
say stadiums. Saw him last weekend twice myself. Oh, you did? Yeah. Awesome. He makes these weird faces now. He never used to do that. In the tongue. Like, yeah. What's with the Nothing. tongue? He was always doing the tongue. I don't remember that. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's fun. That's <laughs> always fun. <laughs> it's good to see him on fire about music still. Yeah. That takes a lot. So, how do you stay on fire with music, man? You've got all the things that you've got, you know. The podcast keeps me connected to things that are happening. Yeah? Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, it really does. Like, I, you know, I wouldn't listen to that much new music if I didn't. I mean, now I think I'm in the habit that I would, but mm -hmm. it took that to sort of like engage with it constantly. Uh, this song is called Luna Park, and I wrote it with Michael Fracasso. Too small to breathe on my own When Luna Park became my home Inside a tent of filtered air I didn't mind while people stared If you paid a doctor Help me now to breathe Underneath the heaters Give me all I need Just another sideshow freak Step right up and take a peek Safe inside my crystal palace The looking glass is missing Alice If you paid a doctor Help me now to breathe Underneath the heaters Give me all I need Cyclone roars while Johnny Fox swallows swords. If you paid a doctor, help me now to breathe underneath the heaters. Give me all I need. If you paid a doctor. find yourself uh you know having a physical product you listen online do you go see them i listen online yeah. i mean i go see bands i mean it's, you know uh it happens all different ways even like social media like someone i like will post something about a band and i'll be like oh what's that band all about i'll go see them you know go look up their stuff or yeah. you know happening a, upon a band and seeing a band without expecting it's still my favorite thing you know Absolutely. like i love you're, that you're talking, you're waiting for your buddy's band to start or something, you're talking at the bar and you're just like, hold on a second, what is this? You know, like that's amazing. That's my favorite. Still I happens. rarely listen to canned music. I need to see it, I need to look yeah. them in the eye and know they mean it. Yeah. You know, that's how I like my music. Yeah. So yeah. Um, you, speaking of income and passion and music, are in one of the best bands, Skyrocket. Oh, thank you. You know, like the people in that band and caliber, including yourself, of musicians Thanks. is off the charts. Yeah, it's a How, great band. Is that, does it fit in the wheelhouse of what we've been talking about, or is that just stepping over well, to another? Well, I mean, sorry to interrupt you. No, no, you know. But that band started uh, in 2001. I joined in, at the beginning of 2002. That's so long, 21 years. <sighs> that's um, when I met her. Oh, uh, that's right. And Trish, her old bandmate. Yeah. Uh, joined in I think in 2003 or 2004 but it was one of those gigs because uh, I was playing with Endo Sheen at the time mm -hmm. and um, I was playing by myself 
and Gaudi had broken up and I remember the first sort of like private gig that we played when Trish got the money and she was like paying us she was like it's a lot more than I'm making at my shows like you guys want to try and do this a little bit more and so I mean yeah we did you know we were all kind of at a point where we had done that whole 90s thing in a van around America as much as you can until you just you know mm -hmm. can't anymore yeah and it was nice to be able to to like make a living playing music without too much I mean the other thing too is you know you there are sacrifices you know I'm not uh it it wasn't my dream to be in a cover band when I got older right that wasn't that wasn't what I was trying to do but the fact that that's been there and we've been able to really make something out of it and and build something with people that are like family it's a pretty amazing thing so yeah. we're pretty lucky and the tunes are great you great tunes. 70s whatever yeah. it is you yeah. have a real focus and yeah we have a and we have a you know generally have a really good time together yeah yeah, man, it looks amazing every time yeah. I've seen the band. I'm forward. Thanks. And the sound is just, I mean, I'm a real, like, you can have a good time and you can sound good one or the other, but when you nail them both, yeah. like, that's a vibe, man. That's yeah, I think we're all the kind of musicians that wouldn't have a good time if it didn't sound good. Yeah, So that's awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. So with new music, which I was uh, begging you to play for us today, yeah. what, uh, you know, where does it come from for you? I, I know some of this is collaborations. You're still writing your own stuff yeah. by yourself. Uh -huh. And uh, you rarely do gigs as Johnny Gowdy. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> it it's hard because there are other sort of like bigger entities that like, you know, like getting to go out and play with Fastball or with Skyrocket or something like that or with Ian Moore, all the sort of people that I've gone off and done like Sideman stuff with has only fed my creativity. Like every time I go and do something like that, I come back ready to to do something next of my own. But I think um, I think what's happened is that I've spent so much time over the last decade with my energy so scattered that unless I'm really working with somebody else, me sitting down and writing a song again, unless I'm coming from a whole different place, it's just like, I got sick of myself. It's that bad. Right. It's like, you just kind of like, yeah. my friend Kyle told me this thing one time, I played him this song that I was working on and he was like, ugh. And I was like, what, it's not good? He's like, no, it's good. It just sounds like another Johnny Gowdy song. And I knew what he meant. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah. I know, I know. It's like not taking any new turns. But as soon as I can start doing that and I get on a vibe, I get more creative again. Do you think you told Paul Simon that sounds like another Paul Simon song? I don't think he told Paul Simon that, <laughs> no. Okay, this song is called Bad Man. Living somewhere dark and insincere Time to hear the people cheer out Getting drunk with my eye Inner voice is there Telling me that I have Run out of choices So I'll make it like I never came to take A chance to leave disaster in my way God. Let it go till the going gets absurd 
your mark But don't ever say a word, no, no Now you think it like you mean it when you hurt You keep an extra heart inside your shirt uh, Because you're the star, uh, uh, uh You're a movie eh, To be fabulous or not to be So leave me to my mess and let me be Because no one looks as good in it as me uh. Let it go till the going gets absurd Leave your mark, but don't ever say a word, no, no I've put together a group of people, I don't know how far it'll go, but we're writing songs, like I was like, I got this group together and I was like, hey, let's let's go and jam and play. And the response was like, okay, what songs do you want us to learn? I was like, no, no learning. Let's go in a room and jam and leave with a song. Nice. And as weird and daunting as that, that's really what I, like, that's, that sounds fun to me right now. Me totally. sitting by myself with an acoustic guitar or piano trying to not <laughs> write another song that sounds exactly like me. Yeah. Because I'll still get in there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, But it's nice to have, like, I'll write a different melody over a chord progression that doesn't come out of me naturally if somebody else comes up with it. Oh, right. You know? Yeah. So that's what I wanted to do. So I'm kind of in the very early stages of doing that. That's great. Of just going in, you know, and playing with the band once every couple of weeks. I love that. Yeah. That's a really good way for music, uh, you know, that's kind of um, of today's uh, time and feel yeah. to come about everybody putting something in yeah you know and also it makes it worth everyone like you're not hiring a drummer to come play this show or you know what i mean i'm totally like that i've gotten maybe that's a lot of the reason why i don't push so hard on my own solo thing because i don't want to go teach somebody back of a magazine and like mm. rehearse back of a magazine with someone for the a millionth time to go play a gig mm -hmm. to come back two weeks later to rehearse it teach someone else mm -hmm. the song you know what i mean totally so that's why i'm like if you would i'd like to get a band if we can play like as much as possible without everyone's lives getting ruined by it like i'd rather be in like a creative unit doing stuff that i wouldn't come up with on my own that's awesome so yeah 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 and kind of like you know having played the sideman over various situations yeah. i guess gives some of that freedom i'm sure yeah this song is called sun earth moon <laughs> Anything that's beautiful Anything you need to survive You hoard it like a child And it keeps you So remotely free, yeah But do you believe The sun revolves around the earth Earth revolves around the moon, moon revolves around you. Moon revolves around the earth, earth revolves around the sun, sun revolves around everyone. When I paint your picture on a stone, throw the stone into the sea, it's Floating like a leaf Weight of waiting for you is just like Overcoming gravity And I don't want to go But I don't believe The sun revolves around the earth Earth revolves around the moon Moon revolves around you revolves around the earth, earth revolves around the sun, sun revolves around everyone. And tomorrow you'll be far away, another daydream fills the distance while I fade. The 
without having to leave So you can be free to believe The sun revolves around the earth Earth revolves around the sun the sun revolves around you the moon revolves around the earth Earth revolves around the sun the sun revolves around everyone You still doing any of the uh, songwriting games? The, you know? um, no, I'm not in one right now, but occasionally I do get in them. There's yeah. a bunch of them now, though. That's There's great. a whole bunch of there. So many folks. So many folks, so many people doing it. And a lot of different groups and people that, like, go and record stuff from their group. And then, like, I know Dave Madden does, like, these big shows at Saxon and stuff yep. with his group. And, mm -hmm. yeah. That's awesome. It's pretty cool. One of the coolest things about your podcast, which is available everywhere, podcasts everywhere, are yeah. available, yeah. how did I get here, yeah. is uh, that you have gotten people that I would be like, <gasps> and then like someone I've never heard of. Right. You know, like the gamut of entertainment and entertainers that you work with is uh, pretty impressive. Thanks. And uh, do you ever get like, <gasps> or um, intimidated? Yeah. Or, yeah. 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 <laughs> Rudy Sarzo. Oh yeah. Like that was a that was a I, it and it was two hours. So like the first forty five minutes was me just not trying to be <laughs> Yeah, or, or be like a Chris Farley. Hey, hey Rudy, you were, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I love it. I would totally be Chris yeah. Farley, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's such a nice guy. Such a nice guy. Um, and he turned out like like um so we're both Cuban and uh he lived in Miami and that's where my family lived. My dad lived there and had a band in Miami, like in the late 60s. Uh, this is a group of dudes that played, but like a couple of the dudes from, from my dad's band were dudes that Rudy used to follow around Miami because they were the coolest dudes what? at the time playing, yeah. That's amazing. Isn't that wild? Yeah. What a connection. Yeah, yeah. Wow, man. Yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty awesome. That is amazing. And I actually connected, uh, I connected this guy, <laughs> Uh, Victor with Rudy because Rudy was like are you in touch with this dude so I'm like yeah I still talk to those guys I've known him my whole life he's like what? is there any way you could hook me up with them and I did I hooked him up that's and so then cool. they got to talk that's to a him. nice connection yeah, for yeah. sure yeah, yeah. Man. Uh, and he's a big um, positive force in pets rehoming uh, yeah. and all Total the things dog he guy. does yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and I see you and your dog on yeah, Facebook yeah. every day this is actually the first dog I've, I haven't shared parenting with anyone mm. I'm a single parent of a dog yeah and it's pretty awesome it's just like a kid man it's a lot but it, it's, on. it's good yeah that's awesome yeah the song is called leave it alone <laughs> It seems though I laugh while it lingers You stand the man And you pointing the finger Baby You just don't treat me right lately When everything is going Just don't leave it alone Oh no Just don't just to say you can see can't you be still just for me? Yeah. Hit me once more and I'll laugh while I'm bleeding. Baby, you just don't treat me right lately. When everything is going good. 
just don't leave it alone Oh no I'm excited that you came to do Capsize, my friend. Me too, there, man. Uh, any uh, horrible stories you want to tell before we go, you know, um, about your moment? About Capsize? Yeah, anything. Um, I do miss the calling. I miss the motherfucker. Like, Absolutely. I love that so much. I remember. Here, farmer! I used to have a video cassette of the first time that we did. I think it was the time that Mr. Rocket Babe was here. And, like, you're like, I'm gonna open up the phones and like you can see it. Like I was so excited. Like my eyes get really big and I'm like, yes, insult me. I was so excited about that. And I'm sure they didn't disappoint. No, not at all. But there's great stuff like, uh, I mean, we've talked about it. I've had both of you guys on the podcast to just basically talk about just what, oh, Austin. Austin was an innovator in access television. Totally. Like, I, there's, I found out some things about my own childhood because I remember coming to Austin when I was like four or five and my mom and her second husband were like, oh, we're gonna go see this show and some, I stayed with someone and that person said, uh, I think they went to the Armadillo and that person said to me, do you wanna watch the show that your mom's at? And I was like, sure. And we watched it on TV. And I was like, how did I do that? And I asked Eddie Wilson, mm -hmm. uh, and he was like, oh no, yeah, that was the thing. Yep. Like they were live streaming, <laughs> live streaming their shows in like 1975. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. And those cameras were like yeah, yeah, suitcases, yeah. man. Yeah. You know? And I mean, some of them still are, but I have some 4K gear that I fit in a bag and yeah. go shoot bands with instead of a truck now. Yeah. So you remember the days we had the truck. I, I remember you guys shooting stuff like at Steamboat. Yeah. I remember you guys coming. I remember doing an interview with you upstairs we at did. Steamboat. So hot. Yeah. That was our little South by thing where I tried to cram as many people in there as oh, I really? could. Yeah, that was fun. Um, yeah, well, you at Warp Tour. I remember the Warp Tour yeah, too. Yeah, dude. yeah. How about that? Didn't we, did, what, didn't we meet a Ramon? We had just all yeah, met a Ramon. There's a Ramon back yeah, there, and uh, Dickie from the Mighty Mighty really Bostons, excited. and the specials were back there. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rancid, and all those cats, man. I remember making a very, very bad choice that day. Where we had a song, uh, one of the songs I was going to play, and I stopped playing it, but there was a <laughs> song that we had that was a really slow song that was like seven and a half minutes long. <laughs> And my approach to the, the, the set at the Warp Tour was like, let's do something no one else is going to do. You did that. <laughs> and that's what we did. And I remember we got up there and there was, we had just gotten signed and there was a lot of like, oh, these guys are about to go to LA and make this record. And then I remember the crowd was there and we started playing this song and like two and a half minutes into it, it was like Renee and my ex-wife Tracy and our manager Martin just like, Good one. <laughs> nice move, buddy. But yeah, I, th I thought it would be great to open with like a, the slowest possible song you can. 
Well, you know, making making decisions, man, that's part of the gig and you learn, right? Well, sometimes you're like, do I play ball or do I want to stand out? Oh, let's, I want to stand out. And you're like, oh, but not like that. Yeah. You didn't come out and cover Kill em All, so that was good. No, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's true. Well, it's uh, Johnny Gowdy, you guys. Uh, how did I get here? Skyrocket and the rare I'm Johnny playing fastball. Gowdy. And fastball currently yeah. on the road. Have You haven't done any Austin shows with them, have you? No. Yeah, I'd love to see that. I got, I we know. went to Houston last week. Yeah. But now I'm, uh, they're out with Smash Mouth, but their shows are too short to have a fourth guy. Yeah. Or, yeah, fourth guy. Hmm. That's awesome, man. Yeah. What a career. Super fun. Glad to catch up with you again. Great catching up with you. I love you, man. Thank you. I love you, brother. Stay tuned, you guys. Yeah, Nothing so but nice. Texas, all Texas music all the time, y'all. And uh, I want to thank the people who make it, Nathan and James we mentioned earlier. Ross has probably taken off, but uh, Puppetos himself has been here to help us today. And the studio audience, my beautiful fiance Renee Woodward, who was kind enough to sing a song and My kill beautiful it. fiance Todd V. Wolfson. Oh, sex. <laughs> sex incarnate. Sex incarnate. <laughs> I smell evil. Your sex is on fire. But yes, Todd V. Wilson, if you need an album cover, he's the man. If you need someone yeah. to tell you a story, he's the man. He's a, photo a good shoot. dude and photo shoot away, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, also, I guess, uh, I don't know your feelings on uh, Ham and Sims. I always like to tell people I love Ham and Sims. Absolutely. The yeah. Sims Foundation, we knew Sims. And, uh, you know, as sad as it may be that uh, everything has gone the way it did, we've gotten a great resource for musicians uh, yeah. in his name. Yeah. And, uh, I can personally recommend Ham because yeah. I can hear. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, you got. I him. was just working them in when I saw you, so I was nice. having real trouble hearing you that day. You know, in general, yeah. trying to conversate, and now they're fine tuned and I'm cooking. Did yours come from? Did your hearing loss come from rock and roll? It came. They showed me on paper the frequencies and said, "That's, That's from rock and roll." Hmm. Yeah. I think it was the Kiss concert specifically. Look it up tour. Okay. I vividly remember when they came out and a boom and I got dizzy and like I couldn't hear right anymore. But then I just kept going. Is Let's Put the X in Sex on that oh, album? No. Maybe God Gave Rock and Roll to You. Oh, that's a great song. <laughs> I love that song. Lick it up. Lick it up. Man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's only right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thanks, you guys, for watching.
<laughs> Yay, Renee, that was great. I'm Dave, you're watching Capsize. Originating out of Austin Films, Austin Public Facility in East Austin, we do it weekly. It's live music, it's music that you can't see anywhere else. It's all about DIY, three decades and moving forward, y'all. How do we get to see this? It's pretty simple. If you look for Austin Public on iPhone or Android, anywhere you get your apps, you can find it. It's called Austin Public. If you are in Austin, you can see it on Grande and Spectrum Cable, Channel 10. Uh, we are Saturdays at 10 p.m. when you see it live. There is a Patreon where you can see things before you see them anywhere. We will put some up on YouTube. It's on Roku. It's on Apple TV. It's everywhere. We're taking over. So no reason not to watch Capsize because we're bringing you nothing but the best that Austin has to bring. Hey, it's Capsize. It's us. We bring you everything you see. It's all local, local crew, local TV, local music. A lethal dose is in here. Who gets it, I won't know. It's scary that it can be put into anything. We can't even see it or notice it. 